The Diesel Podcast. Digital integration in English as a second or other language. Episode 41, Interactive Video and Captions in Language Learning. Welcome to Diesel. This is episode 41. We are your hosts. I am Brent Warner. And I'm Michelle Reyes. Hey, Brent. Hi. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Oh, is it Teacher Appreciation Week? Thank you. Yeah, and (laughs) Tuesday is National Teacher Appreciation Day, so be sure to do a Google search to see what kind of freebies you can get. Are there freebies? What what happens on that? Yeah, day? on Tuesday. Um, I think Star. I'm not sure about Starbucks. It might depend on the region, but I think McDonald's and a bunch of other restaurants. Um, usually Chipotle does a um a, a free burrito. I'm not sure if they've changed this mm. year, but there's a bunch of freebies. So. Oh. Do a search to see what's in your area. Cool. I had no idea. And I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you too. Uh, so we've been doing some of the clubhouse stuff, which has been fun. Um, I like mm-hmm. our 30 minute format. And so thank you for those of you who have joined and listened in. It's kind of been uh, growing a little bit every time. And so we had a, a fair amount of people last week and um, we've got students coming in. We've got teachers coming in. It's a kind of a cool little little crowd going on there. Yeah, we, and we've seen people in other countries, which is one of the goals that we have uh, for this podcast is to reach other people. But it's really nice to be able to reach those people who are on at that moment live from other countries. So thank you for joining us. Yeah. And for those who are listening, uh, I know a few people have said like, hey, uh, I don't have an Android, but I think there's an or sorry, I have an Android, so I can't get on. But I think an Android version is coming out this month. Um, so Ooh, keep keep an eye I out. I did for not that. know that. So, yeah, should be good. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So let's get into it. All right. So shall we talk today? Uh, we're going to talk about um, interactive video and captions in language learning. Mm-hmm. Um I, I, I don't, well, I assume you didn't study Spanish in high school, obviously. Um, well, maybe, I don't know what, what the schools make you do. Like they, they had all sorts of weird things. They're like, oh, you're a native English or native, native Spanish speaker. Why don't you go take this Spanish class? <laughs> um, but regardless, I took Spanish in high school and we had to watch a video called uh, Destinos. Have you heard of this? Uh, is it like a soap opera mm-hmm. thing? Yeah. Uh, it, I've heard of it. <laughs> It's like a language learning uh, telenovela and it's like, you know, it's super cheesy and, um, you know, it's a story. I, I honestly can't remember the characters. I just remember watching it and then being like, you know. Ricardo es muy fuerte or you know, whatever, whatever it might have been, right? And then they would slow down so that you could kind of capture. But it was a story that went, went through everything, right? So you're watching these videos. And so mm-hmm. um, all this to say that from early days, uh, I, I think a lot of teachers have used video and used, um, uh, you know, uh, whether it was videos or DVDs or online streaming or whatever it is, we've, we've used a lot of video services to help learn language. Um, and so today we wanted to talk a little bit about using video, um, a little bit of the research, of course, and also um, maybe some ways or some tools that can help people do that. Right. Okay, so one of the first uh, articles that I looked at, it was only about videos. So it's not even getting into um, the interactive things, which I think we're going to want to talk about, uh, but just videos alone. And it, this article was called uh, The Use of Videos as a Cognitive Stimulator and Instructional Tool in Tertiary ESL Classrooms by Kaur Yong, Zin, and Duit in the Malaysian Journal of Educational Technology. But basically, what it had showed that is that videos alone, and again, nothing special, just watching the videos, right? Uh, It can help retain subject content. Um, And so there's a quote in there that said from um, Heron and Hanley, 1992, asserted that the use of video facilitates foreign language or the learning of a second language in the aspects of comprehension and retention of content by rendering the information more meaningful to learners. Um, I, I mean, 
you know, it's t- some of these things sound obvious, but it's nice to have a little backup to, to, uh, to make sure that you're like, oh yeah, this is true, right? And because it does become more meaningful when we watch a video about something relevant to us than it is like just the teacher talking in front of the class or maybe writing something up on the whiteboard, right? Um, right. So that was useful. And then it also, they pointed out that it can contextualize learning. Um, and they pointed out in their article, they said it was found that many of the first year students' knowledge of cultural information significantly improved from watching narrative videos. And this is something uh, for years, um, even when it was back like DVDs and, and things like that, I was like, oh, I, I would go buy DVDs so that I could show parts of these things to my students in order to like say, hey, do you understand like some of these cultural things that are going on inside of this movie or inside of this television show? Um, because that is a lot more clear to see like a drama using something than it is for, again, the same type of thing, just a teacher to say, well, hey, did you know that Americans believe this, right? And so when they can see it or they can kind of understand it through some sort of acting or some context in the video um, with characters that they care about, it connects them a lot more to it. Um, so then one other article that I wanted to share here, uh, the effects of problem, uh, sorry, the effect of problem based video instruction on learner satisfaction, comprehension and retention in college courses by, uh, Choi and Johnson in the British journal of educational technology, um, points out that there were, uh, significant differences in learner satisfaction, comprehension and delayed retention, which is important, right? So they're saying, Hey, they kept this information for longer when they're doing things things um, through project-based video instructions rather than project-based text instructions. So Mm -hmm. if you get all this stuff written down versus if you watch a video and kind of interact with it, um, then you are going to have a lot better. uh, So the, the students will be happier, right? They will understand more and they will keep that information for longer, which is a pretty cool thing to think about and to understand. That's really interesting. Um, And I agree with you, Brent, because uh, one of the units that I teach uh, teaches workshop vocabulary and tool vocabulary uh, to build a a birdhouse. That's the project the students do. But I found that, number one, building a birdhouse doesn't necessarily connect with many of our students, (laughs) um, especially in other cultures. (laughs) And I personally don't really care about birdhouses. So in order to make that work... The homeless homeless bird community is is going to write a petition I'm sorry, I do not mean any offense to the bird community (laughs) or the birdhouse community out there. Um, But what I have found is that a video explaining how to build the tool, the the birdhouse with the tool vocabulary, and this was just a, you know, a video, I think it's done by uh, some, they sell tools and they they, uh, review tools. That is so much more interesting to the students and they're able to then retell the process of building the tool house, applying the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, I have substituted what's in the book with the video um and it just makes it so much more entertaining and pain-free for the students (laughs) (laughs) yeah isn't that interesting Uh, because it's the same topic right like but same exact topic yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing so I, I, I totally get that, too, because sometimes I'll be like, oh, it's just so dry, right? But then when you watch the video, you can see what the person's doing and how they're talking about it. Yeah, so. Right, and I think uh, many teachers with that w- with that specific unit will say, well, just have them build a birdhouse, you know, go to the craft store. But I've found that students actually don't care for it. They, they, f- they feel like, why, why are we doing this? I'm not a kid or I'm not, you know, I don't, they don't find the purpose. But with the video, it's just different. They're actually in a workshop with real tools. Mm. And now when I've got, when I have the students retell and give me the steps because it's a process that they have to be able to retell with the vocabulary, they're able to uh, recall what the, what was that in the video. Not only that, but then if I turn off the sound, um, they can come up with their own sentences and they're able to tell me like what what are the steps for building a, a, a birdhouse? What tools do you need? What are the verbs that we use with those tools? So it's, it's very interesting. And I always mention it to other colleagues who say that particular unit is dry and hard to <laughs> teach or, you know, not fun to teach. Um, but never underestimate the power of one of those videos. Yeah. 
I, I would also follow up on that. Like, I don't know about you, Michelle, but how many times do you watch a video of something that you would never actually do or make yourself, but like just watching the video is kind of interesting, right? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. It's like those, you know, those, um, uh, my nephew, I have a four year old nephew and he loves watching, um, those toy opening videos. They, they unwrap a toy and that's something that my sister's never going to purchase for him, but then he gains the vocabulary and he'll say things to my sister and my sister will say where'd you learn that and it just came from a video of someone unboxing or unwrapping a toy and talking about it so all of those review videos that you see out there um yeah yeah yeah, i definitely look into that cool cool maybe a future future episode (laughs) yeah so uh we we can't really talk about videos without talking about captions as well right this is such a powerful Mm -hmm. part of videos and so Michelle, i know you did some research on this so what did you come up with yeah so so the reason why i'm interested in captions so much is because like you said i didn't have to learn spanish in high school but i did um, study japanese and other languages and one of the things that helped me a lot was turning on the captions while I was watching something, um, especially as an emergent learner. And I've run into instructors who will say, no, 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 this is a listening activity. You um, I'm not going to turn on the captions. You should be able to understand. And so I, I would say that it depends on the goal of the activity. But if the goal is to have students um, be, notice more of the vocabulary or notice how things are pronounced, you might want to have that on. And I actually always tell my students, hey, you know what? I learned, a, I picked up a lot of vocabulary from reading the captions, uh, subtitles on movies, television shows. So um, I don't see why not as a language learner, I'm going to do that. And then as you progress in your learning, we can now start taking away that, that um, extra support. But the articles that I read were on websites that we you've probably heard of. So Reading Rockets had um, a whole uh, article called Captioning to Support Literacy. And this is where I feel captions are extremely important. And Elise Brand in 2011 um, looked at research that has shown watching videos appears to have a positive impact on comprehension skills and combining with the text or captions will boosts vocabulary acquisition, and it addresses the skill deficits of struggling readers. And so I will tell you over and over again, there were many times when I had studied something in class, uh, and then I had seen the word and my brain on a video, and my brain made the connection. And also learned a new uh, context in which to use that word in. Um, they also, in this, in this article, they also found that, um, students who were learning English or another language, um, showed improvement in reading, listening, comprehension, word recognition, which is very important, decoding skills, motivation, and vocabulary acquisition. So all of those, you know, if we have someone who is a good reader, then they're going to expand their vocabulary. And so for me, Oftentimes, a challenge is that students don't like to read outside of their um, class time. Mm-hmm. They don't have the time or they may not be, mo- may not be, be motivated. But uh, showing a video with the captions actually does help them. And if you give them a specific um, goal like hey, or purpose, like, hey, we're going to watch this. And I want you to, as, you're, as we're watching, come up with five words or five phrases that you heard. And then we're going to talk about them at the end. Then you're not interrupting all the time to have to translate or to have to do a lot of that. Because that's, I know that, that sometimes students want to translate every word. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, it, in terms of motivation, it helps to remove some of the anxiety of not knowing the language. Yeah. Um, we, you know, in my house is a, a multilingual house. And so mm-hmm. we always have captions on all the time, right? Like they're just part of whether it's English or whether it's, uh, you know, Japanese or other languages, we always have subtitles on, right? And even in, in that uh, that matching language. So when we're watching English television, we have English subtitles on. When we're watching Japanese television, we have Japanese subtitles on. Um, and that is... Uh, super helpful to me but 
you know, some people complain about having subtitles on. They're like, I don't want to read, but like, it turns out I read so much more now. Like, I, I read, I, I enjoy reading it in English at the same time as I'm listening because I like to kind of see how words are played and put together, and maybe I don't totally understand, or I'm like, oh yeah, that is a different way of using that phrase or that word or word or something. Um, but then also for me, when I'm you know kind of not really planning on doing any language study but I just naturally want to like look up some of the words or you know if it's if it's in uh, Japanese words are coming up I'll naturally want to look them up and even though I'm kind of watching for entertainment or for downtime I can still uh, use that as a a a little growth opportunity too so um, this this all makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, and you know, one of the things again, um, you are not only seeing the seeing something play out in a, in a context, but you're also reading it. So every time you're reading it, or even sometimes, you know, as you're reading, sometimes students are reading out loud or repeating. So that's another chance to internalize certain grammar structures. You're also picking up on different um, registers, right? So it fits a, um, I don't know if it's a it's a, a serious movie or a drama, you're gonna see different styles of speaking. You're gonna see different grammar structures. So um, another article um, that I found on Ed, Ed Week, this was uh, captioning gives literacy a boost. And in that article, they talked about a study done with students in Hawaii to see if karaoke style subtitling improved reading comprehension. So they used broad musicals um, to support reading strategies. So so students were listening to the music and followed along with text as if they were doing karaoke. Mm. And so what they found was that, um, oh, and and as they were watching the students or as they were listening, they were or watching videos, they would. Um, answer questions about what they were uh, reading or listening to. They weren't doing they Hamilton, found, were they? Uh, well, this one didn't have Hamilton, but I'll tell you, I got really good at at history by listening to Hamilton. Hamilton's so <laughs> and fast, though, right? Like that, that. It is very fast. Yeah. So I, I'm, I mean, uh, that that's a conversation for another time. But that speed there is just an interesting thing. Like I guess I, I would say that has to be a higher level student, right, to be able to catch oh, up. Oh, absolutely. And keep up, yeah. yeah. So they use cats and Les Miserables in this case. Mm. Um, although I would say, I would argue that I have students who listen to Eminem to, to learn Eminem songs, to learn vocabulary, because a lot of his vocabulary is academic yes. vocabulary and then, you know, <laughs> non-academic vocabulary. So, mm-hmm. but they'll tell me, Hey, I heard this word, this word on, uh, an Eminem song. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, And other words you've learned. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) um, so in the study, they found that students who had had same language subtitling intervention actually scored significantly higher on follow up tests of reading comprehension than the students who hadn't. So um, this suggests that students who are struggling with reading or learning English as a second language or as a second or other language that subtitling um, and captions can actually really help. And I, I've, I actually do believe that. Um, I, sometimes I, you know, play videos for my students uh, without seeing the video, just the sound. And then I go back to the video, but play it with the captions and they're able to recall so many more phrases. So instead of recalling one vocabulary word, they'll recall like the actual collocation or three word phrase instead and because they've read it and now they're paying attention to other words next to it or after it. Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Um, I, I could see where, you know, I I've done that too with my suggestion for students. A lot of the times is like, um, watch it. Well, I mean, depending on what they have access to and, uh, you know, my, my old suggestions were watch it in Watch it dubbed first so you understand the story, then move to watching it subtitled, then move to watching it without subtitles, right? And so moving through that path of like your comfort with the story and your comfort with the background level can then open up your understanding more and more. And I don't just mean one time, one time, one time, but like, you know, stories that you're interested in and that you would be willing to watch multiple times um, can be a great way for them to... uh, to kind of pursue and then push themselves into more better understanding of the language as well. Right. So, yeah, we've got a few things on here. That's great. Um, And then I think this is, uh, you know, 
there's less studies so far on uh, totally interactive videos, um, and this is kind of some of the areas we're going to be sharing about later today with our with our actual tools. But I did find an article called um, "Augmented Interactive Video." enhancing video interactivity for the school classroom. And I, I, I'm going to apologize right from the beginning because these were done by some Greek researchers. Um, and so my, I, my Greek, I just, my, my <laughs> mouth always just tumbles over itself when I try to, when I try to say Greek words and Greek names, but here I go. Um, it is by uh, Kazanidis Pal- uh Papadopoulos and uh, Sinakos. I think that's not too bad. Um, and so it's uh, written in uh, the Journal of Engineering, Science, and Technology Review. Uh, and then basically this was an interesting article because <laughs> it went right past, it just blew past the whole interactive video thing and it went into like, hold on a second. Now when we're using interactive videos, they're fine when students are by themselves, but people using them inside of the classroom is not quite enough. And so they're making an argument for using things like AR and VR as interactive videos inside of a physical classroom, um, which I think is a not a conversation that most of us are ready to <laughs> to explore. I mean, I you know, it's, it's an interesting conversation, but I don't think a lot of teachers are practically ready to implement AR and VR into the classroom on a daily basis, uh, or at least many teachers are not. Um, but it was interesting because they're talking about these interactive videos, uh, which is, they, they had said that there was uh, evidence coming out of the literature which suggested that uh, interactive video is an attractive alternative for guiding students' attention. Uh, also for reducing cognitive overload, enhancing learning effectiveness, and motivating the students to learn more. Um, and so I think this idea, uh, and, and again, we'll get into some of these uh, points, but you know, when you can watch for a short amount of time and then respond to it and then watch again for a little bit of time and then respond or go back, especially like with these some of these interactive video tools, you know, you can have the choice of like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch that again. Or I I didn't totally pay attention. Did I, did I respond to that? Right. Um, that lets you kind of get more into it. And when our brains start to wander and we kind of, yeah, hold on a second. I'm going to talk, I'm thinking about something else. It, these, some of these interactive video tools, what they do is they'll stop and they'll say, Hey, are you paying attention? And let you kind of focus in on that. Um, I think a little bit about like choose your own adventure stories, you shall, when I would read like mm-hmm. a page, right? And you're like, okay, cool. Am I ready to make my choice for going to the next page? Where, where do I want to go? But if I didn't get it or if I was like, or if I kind of was like my brain was en- ended up going somewhere else, then that would be my marker of like, oh, this is my place to stop and make sure that I really understand why I'm making this choice. And so then I would go back and reread the page or reread that last paragraph and then move forward into the choice. So I think we can talk about this, but this is kind of a way that um, interactive videos can allow us to move forward with this. So um, do you use much uh, interactive videos or have you used them in the past? Um, I have it very much. Have you? Yeah, I, I've used it a fair amount, um, and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. getting better and better at it, um, but mm-hmm. I think that's a good reason for us to jump into sharing uh, some of the tools and some of the ways that people can do that. So let's do that right after the break. So you don't have any iTunes reviews this month, but we are listed as number one on easytoolset.com as one of the top eight ESL English as a second language podcasts. So hey. thank you for that. Hey, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know there were eight ESL podcasts, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, there, there are some out there. So cool. Uh, let's put the link in there, easytoolset.com. Thank you for listing us there. All right, so some tools. So, so Michelle, there's lots of different ways to kind of work with videos. Um, you know, I think I think teachers are a lot more comfortable with them now, uh, even than they were a year ago, for sure. Um, and especially teachers who are doing like asynchronous work. So they're saying, hey, you guys got to go sort on your own and we're not going to come together. Um, but uh, we found a, a number of things that we can share uh, that people can use. And so I think you got the first one. What did you find? Yeah, so CNN 10 is one that I use often. It is the news around the world and 
uh, nationally in 10 minutes. So usually it splits everything into three segments. And um, you've uh, you've got I, I would recommend using the captions mm -hmm. um, because it helps students to pick up a lot of phrasal verbs, a lot of new vocabulary, a lot of verbs. And so you'll watch for 10 minutes and you can go back and have students uh, retell what they saw and then look at vocabulary. Now, the great thing I like about CNN 10 is that at the end of the week, they have lessons available that you can download or recap um, exercises. And so it will help the students to recall what they've watched. And so they can, again, produce and um, share what they've internalized. Uh, students tend to really um, respond well to CNN 10. The only thing is, I think at the end of the summer, they take a break and they don't return until August. So, uh, but I really recommend that because especially working with our international students, they do cover international news within those 10 minutes. So it um, helps them to tie things um, outside of the United States as well. Cool. Uh, I've never even heard of that, so I'll have to go check that out. Um, my first one is uh, Lyrics Training. Uh, this is a really cool site that, again, going back to what you were talking about, Ishel, with um, you know the musicals and those types of things, uh, they basically pull in uh, music videos, although they do also do television shows and things like that, where uh, what they do is basically a close exercise on whatever song you're interested in, and you can choose it by type of music that you like. So if you're into pop, that's fine. If you're into heavy metal, that's fine. If you're into, you know... Um, I, th I think even opera and like whatever all the, uh, <laughs> but basically what it does is as it, yeah so you're listening <laughs> and it gives <laughs> it gives um it gives text along the bottom and then it gives a close right so it gives a blank and then what it and it stops when after it's played that little section or that uh verse or or chorus and then you type in the word that's missing inside of the um inside of the close exercise and then it tells you if you're right or wrong right and then if you're right, it lets you keep moving forward. If you're wrong, it goes back and it plays that little section over again so you can listen again and try and figure it out. Um, it does all these extra things that like adding up points on like how accurate you were on all these things. And so it can be a little bit gamified on top of it. But um, uh, I actually first heard about this from our French teacher in, in our department here. And uh, she's like, oh, you know, like, have you ever used this thing? It's so cool. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, it, it's not super fancy looking, but uh, lyricstraining.com, uh, I believe, right? Yeah, lyricstraining.com uh, lets you practice and really interact with the songs. And I like it, too, because it goes back to what we we're talking about is it, it's when you find something that you're interested, you're going to be much more engaged with it. Yeah, and my students, um, what they what I tend to find is they they find a song they like, and then they play it over and over and over and over again, and then they by the end of I don't know however many times they play it, they've memorized it because they've seen the lyrics rather than just listening to it or following a, a lyric um, sheet somewhere else. So I really like that. Cool. Um, the next one is one we've talked about before. This is Uglish Uglish dot com, mm -hmm. which takes uh, videos from YouTube and you're able to click or you're able to search for a specific chunk of text. So let's say if you were doing phrasal verbs, you wanted to type in a phrasal verb, then it pulls up a, it pulls up a video where the speaker is saying that phrasal verb within some kind of context. So you could actually click through and see how the speaker is using it, uh, what topic is mostly tends to come up, and also pronunciation, because there's a lot of times where the speakers, you know, will pronounce according to their region or their personality. So um, you can use it for grammar structures. So if you're looking at passives, you might um, you might type in a word and see what uh, what passive verb is used right after it. And so students actually really like to see that, and they'll tell me like, hey, I. I saw this on Uglish and then I noticed that they used it in this case, how, what, and then they'll ask a question, mm -hmm. but it really supports, um, them seeing what comes before the word, what comes after the word, what that sentence looks like, what the context of that sentence, uh, is. And so you, you have a lot of authentic, uh, samples of, of speaking and, um, and then they're reading it. So they internalize the spelling of that, which is great. Yeah. One of the cool things also about Uglish is, um, 
you can click, I think it's North American English and British English, right? Up at the top. And, and, so, yeah, and Australian. And mm-hmm. Australian English. Australian yeah, English. so so it'll it'll isolate those different ones. I used this actually a week or two ago for um, for my students to understand transitional phrases, right? And so mm-hmm. it was great because it's like I was doing, you know, I made like a slideshow and then each slide had a, like a, a little, you know, whatever the transitional phrase was. So it's like, you know, um, uh anyways or something like that right and so it's like mm-hmm. okay anyways and then and then you go put in a link to the video so they could go find it um one example that i showed but then they can just click on next and listen to like a hundred different examples of people mm-hmm. using that phrase and so um i i think this is a, a great tool which is often uh underappreciated but but really powerful um a couple other ones uh Edpuzzle and Play Posit, I think we can't really talk about this whole world of interactive video without without putting these two in. So um, Edpuzzle and Play Posit, uh, edpuzzle.com and uh, playposit.com, that's P-L-A-Y-P-O-S-I-T. Um, both of these are kind of the leads in terms of the education world where you will go load a video. Um, so you will load up a YouTube video or you can link them from lots of different sources, but essentially what it does is it puts a layer on top of that video and then it lets you create interactions as the teacher uh, with these uh, videos. And so you say, hey, at the 30 second mark, I want to pause and I want to put in a multiple choice question. Or at the 45 second mark, I want to um, pause it and have a little discussion board that will show up right next to the video. Or um, they have all these different little tools that you can use with it. So um, depending on the one that you're using. And again, these go check with your school because uh, hopefully they're paying for it. Uh, It it might cost you money if you're using one of these uh, independently, but um, these are really where currently the strength of interactive videos are. Um, And then you can choose all sorts of things to do with them. So like I said, you can, you can make choices as the teacher to say, hey, you can go back and you can review the last part of the video again in order to show your understanding. If you're doing something that's a little bit more like an assessment, you could actually say, you can only watch this one time and you have to listen and answer to it, you know, answer at one time. So you could make a video of yourself talking about something, make a screen recording, put that up, layer uh, Edpuzzle or play pause it on top of it. And then that could actually be your quiz or your test for the class. Right. And so they could only watch the whole thing one time. Um, they could, uh, you know, interact with it in lots of different ways. They can do short answers. They can do, you know, writing up responses. Um, you can also just plug in a pause. So if it's a video of something else, so if you're watching a YouTube video, you can actually just have a pause and then just add your own comment into it right on that spot so there's a lot this is really there's so much here to talk about uh and and so many different ways to use it um but for language learners you know as a thoughtful teacher you can turn a short four minute video into like a a 20 minute activity or a 30 minute activity depending on how long they have to think about everything so um really here uh, there is a lot to be used and a lot to um, explore with for helping your students move along, but also keeping in mind the things that we talked about before of like, hey, why don't I do something that's culturally engaging? Or why don't I do something that is, um, you know, fun for them? Because then it's just watching the video and they're just going to, they're going to be watching it anyways. And then they're going to interact with it at the same time or respond to it or, um, or uh, build their own ideas on top of it. So Edpuzzle and PlayPosit, both of those are really excellent choices for tools. So I have a new one that was shared uh, with us by Luna from episode 40, oh, and yeah. that is Woodpecker app. And um, <laughs> this is pretty cool. looks like it's only available for um, mobile devices at the moment. Uh, it, it's an app that pulls different um, high interest videos. So you might have stuff from NPR, TED.com. Um, there's a few from different uh, English channels. Um, I believe there was also BBC Learn English. I think that's what it's called. Uh, But what it does is it plays the video and then it isolates each uh, segment of of 
um, speech and you can see it. So you can see the transcript. And then what you can do is you can click on a word and it'll bring up the word in a dictionary or a translator. So um, right now it's only limited to about seven languages. So, uh, so it looks like it's in development, but it, it, from what I could uh, gather and as I poked around, it looks like it's a well done app. I didn't find any um, obtrusive ads or anything like that. I didn't have any ads popping up at all. Mm. So um, Woodpecker app is something worth um, checking out. Thanks, Luna, for sharing. Luna, <laughs> Luna actually sent me an email mm -hmm. after our recording, and she's like, wait, I forgot to share about this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, I guess we'll have to wait for, for a future time to talk about the more more things that are on there. But um, I'm, I'm sure Woodpecker is one of those, too. So awesome. Um, and then the last one uh, I think we'll talk about here, uh, at least for the, these basic tools, is um, Spiral.ac. Now, I hadn't heard of this before, but it looks pretty robust. Uh, basically, what it is, is another interactive one uh, and it, it lets you interact with many different types of things so including like interactive whiteboards and things um, but I'm just going to focus in on the one that's a video right now which is called clip uh, so if you go to spiral.ac and then you go to clip um it says on, on their page, it says, turn any public video into a live chat with questions and quizzes. Watch with the class as they answer each question or post a review and grade an assignment for the students to complete on their own time. So it's kind of cool. Like it turns your video into a live chat as you're going through and watching it, uh, which I think is a kind of a fun way to do it, which doesn't work so well in Zoom. I don't know. Like sometimes you can do it. But like, I like that it's built in as a single platform and then there's no real logging into this either, which is one of my favorite things for ed tech tools, which is just give me the code and you can access and start doing it right away with the students. So, um, so, uh, spiral.ac and you can go in and look for, uh, one of their multiple tools, but this one is called clip. Very cool. That's new for me. Um, then we have two other tools, which are, I think we've talked about them many times. They are favorites of ours. <laughs> but if we would like students to be creating their own stuff, so, you know, have an image and overlay text, um, you could be using Spark Video. Um, and Spark Video just comes up so much because of the ease of use and the fact that it's free and you can, you know, you can create something pretty cool in a very short time. Um, Plus, it, it's just so, uh, I, I find that students' um, creativity shoots through the roof when they see what they can create and make it look so um, professional. Yeah. So Spark Video, you could, you could even have um, a clip from that you're sharing and then have them come up with alternative subtitles or captions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of cool things. And we have a, mm -hmm. at least one episode about Spark Video, so we'll, we'll right. share that in the show notes. And the other one is also, unfortunately, it's Apple only, um, and this is Clips. So those of you who are on Apple, um, Clips is an app that will um, put in captions automatically as you're speaking them. And then, of course, if it makes a mistake, you can go back and correct it. But um, students can now uh, make their own captioned videos if they have an Apple phone, an Apple device. Um, I wish so much that there that we had this for Android because the app is so good, so well done. Um, and I've made several videos and my students have as well. But the fact that the, you know, people always ask me, how did you get the subtitles in there? Did you take a long time typing? And I was like, no, it just automatically reads your, <laughs> what you're saying. And then um, you go back and correct what you need to and, and boom, there it is. Took zero time typing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there is a, an Android, maybe not made by by Android. So the nice thing about that one is it's made by Apple, right? So it's built right in. It's, mm -hmm. e it's easy to do. I thought there was an Android version, but um, anyways, if anyone knows, please uh, come back and drop a link in the in the show notes and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to add it in there as well. All right, it is time for our fun finds. And this time around, I have a cosmetic. <laughs> now that things are starting to open up, 
it makes sense that you'd want to put your makeup back on or try new things. Or should I be taking so, screenshots of you and posting them? So you're... Yeah, I'm actually wearing this. This is a <laughs> Lime Crime plushy uh, matte lipstick. <laughs> Wait a second. Lime, it, cri- yeah. pl- lime Crime plushies. I thought, I thought this was going to be a stuffed animal. Plushies. Yeah. Well, that's because when you apply this on your lips, it's really soft like a plushie. Really? Like like brushing a plushie across your lips is what it feels like? <laughs> it just it's not sticky, it's not oily, it's just light and feathery. Hmm. Those of us who wear lipstick will understand what that means. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and it stays on your lips, so it's a fairly um, inexpensive product. So if you want to go out there and try any other colors, yeah. I, I like the fact that you don't have to worry about leaving a lipstick stain somewhere. Or that it's sticky on your lips. So Lime Crime Plushies Matte. Now, uh, Michelle, I'm going to point out that your lips right mm-hmm. now are not green. So the name, is that a flavor, I'm assuming? Or is that a... No, no Lime, Lime Crime is the brand. Oh, okay. <laughs> you always like, <laughs> I, you always get these things. I'm like, I have no idea about what you're talking about in this entire world here. Okay, so Lime Crime is the brand. It's not the mm-hmm. flavor and it's not the color. Um, and Plushies is the style of their, their line. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So much for me to learn. All right. Mine (laughs) is, uh, for those of you who know me, you may know that I am a Mystery Science Theater 3000 fan, always have been. Um, And uh, what they're doing right now is they are, uh, they have a a Kickstarter campaign called MakeMoreMST3K.com. It's pretty cool what they're doing. So they, if you're a fan of the show, you know, it was like basic cable all the way up into the sci-fi channel and comedy central. And then it was on Netflix and Netflix didn't continue it. Um, but what they're trying to do is take the control back to them and to the fans. And so the Kickstarter is kind of letting them create their own studio and their own app and website and portal and everything, um, in order to kind of keep making the show. So it is only going uh, if this once this episode comes out. Uh, it's only going, I think, until May sixth. And so, if you are a Mystery Science Theater fan, um, I don't know. It's already cleared the bait, the first level, but they're trying to hit these different target goals. Um, I don't know if it's going to get to the top target goal. Uh, it would be great if it did. Um, but if you love Mystery Science Theater, kind of cheesy movies and uh, jokes and all those types of things. Uh, there's a Kickstarter out there right now, which uh, you can support. So make more MST3K.com. As always, thank you so much for listening to the show. Uh, you could win a one of a kind diesel pin by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're giving us a shout out any other way, tag us on social media. All right. Uh, we are still on Patreon, so um, diesel.org slash Patreon or patreon.com slash diesel. I think uh, either way it works. Uh, or is it diesel pod? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you want to support the show, a um, dollar, three dollars, six dollars. Uh, those are the different choices. And, uh, you know, we hope you uh, enjoy the show. You, whether or not you're able to support it is totally okay, but it is there if uh, that's something you feel compelled to chase down. And we are continuing on Clubhouse. Uh, We have our 30-minute check-in Mondays. So drop by if you're able to either listen or participate. This is at 5 p.m. California time, 7 p.m. Central time, and 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you're somewhere else in the world, if you see us, pop in to say hello just jump on in uh and you can also access that at any time through um diesel.org slash clubhouse so for the show notes and other episodes please check out diesel.org slash 41 and of course you can listen to us at voice ed canada that's v-o-i-c-e-d dot c-a you can find us on twitter uh the show is at diesel pod and i am at brent g warner and I'm Ixy underscore Pixie. That's I X Y underscore P I X Y. In Vietnamese, thank you is Cam Un, Cam Un for tuning in to the Diesel Podcast. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good one. Bye.